and Rostern puts out the welcome mat as the CTV Spring Hometown Tour rolls into town. This is the CTV News. You are looking at a massive crowd that has gathered tonight in Rawson at Centennial Park, a lively place with rides, a swimming pool, ball diamonds, and there are even train rides going on behind us. Good evening. It is day four of the CTV Hometown Tour. We are uh, broadcasting live from Rawson at Centennial Park. I'm Jeff Rogstad. And I'm Chantel Huber. The weather uh, right now is very sunny, <laughs> yes. very nice, but it did hail earlier. It poured rain. We had some thunder and lightning, yes. so uh, you're lucky. I know. You're I lucky. I, I, everything turned out good. Mother Nature is cooperating, so thank you, Mother Nature. So far, so good. We brought Kevin along with us as well. Yes, it brings back a lot of memories. The Roster and Wheat Kings of the Fort Carlton Hockey League, of course, and they had softball back in the 80s, and we used to do play-by-play -play with Dennis Bayak mm -hmm. on TV. It's like a walk down memory lane yes. for Kevin, for sure. We just want to make note uh, our colleague Rob McDonald. Uh, he actually underwent some minor surgery a couple of weeks ago. Uh, he is recovering well at home, but uh, he just wanted everybody to know that he is missing us on hometown tour and uh, he will be back with us in just a few days now I don't want to rub it in Rob but you have been missing a whole lot of fun <laughs> we had a chance to check out Valley Regional Park this afternoon it was hard to believe 40 years ago this was all but bald prairie and as you can see lots to do in this park and it's a haven for kids of all ages Jeff couldn't believe his good fortune when he discovered the park had a zip line he couldn't wait to try it out Chantel, on the other hand, decided against the zip line and headed straight for the big red slide, and she screamed all the way down. Hey, I didn't see you on it, uh, but we did see Kevin trying out the yellow slide at the other end of the park. It's been a while since Kev had to be on a playground. We've had such a busy day here. Uh, we're going to show you some of the stuff we did in town today, including the Station Arts Centre. That's right. We'll also show you a special place that is helping people with challenges thrive. And, we're, Kevin, you're going to be talking golf. That's right. A beautiful 18-hole uh, golf course, of course. It's about a kilometer north of Rostron. Everybody sees it from the highway. Thank you much, Trish. Yes, we are broadcasting live from Rossland tonight. We are in Centennial Park, where uh, a lot of fun and games and a great crowd has uh, come out to join us on day four of our CTV Spring Hometown Tour. That's right, and a lot of people have come out to greet us. And, you know, it's, it's hard not to see why people would say this would be a great place to come and make home. And uh, here's a preview of the community. Located at the junction of highways 11 and 312, Rostern is nestled in the heart of the valley between the North and South Saskatchewan rivers between Saskatoon and Prince Albert. Rostern is a community rich in heritage as it is celebrating 109 years as a community this year. Part of its history is strongly tied to farming practices. In fact, Rostern was home to Seeger Wheeler, a man considered the most famous farmer on the Canadian prairies for his progressive farming techniques and inventions. Today, Rostern is a bustling community with a population of just under 1,400. It's been a busy day here in Rostern, and we've had a lot to do and only a few short hours to do it in. Yeah, here are some of the stops we made along the way. One of our first was to take a look at the historic post office in town. It was built in 1928 and the cornerstone laid by Prime Minister Mackenzie King. And, an interesting note, the second floor of the post office is used as a residence for medical, lab and nursing students. We also had a chance to pop in on the folks at Valley Action Industries. The facility helps adults facing intellectual challenges. Brandy and Chris showed us the facility, which helps more than 30 people who are responsible for collecting and sorting the community's curbside recycling program. And then it was off to Horizon Pet Food, a family-owned pet food developer and manufacturer. We had a chance to tour the facility. The Saskatchewan-based company uses all natural and locally grown ingredients in their products, which are shipped across the country and the U.S. We are back at Centennial Park, and joining me now is the mayor of Rostern, Doug Knoll, a uh, retired teacher, taught in uh, Rostern for how many years? 28 years. So 28 years, a teacher, so you've seen a lot in this community. I think you told me you, you came for one year and stayed for a lot longer. Yes, that's that's what it amounts to. So let's talk a little bit about the challenges that, uh, that you see uh, facing a community like yours. Um, so many communities close to urban centers like Saskatoon are growing very fast, uh, sometimes too fast. Are you happy with the pace of growth? in Rostern? I think the pace is just about right. If, uh, if you get too fast to growth, then you get infrastructure problems and it gets to be a very expensive in planning and uh, putting down 
getting things in place. Well, certainly, and, and I know that there are, you know, we're in, we're in a beautiful facility like this, and we're going to find out more about what it took to get this facility here. But what do, I guess, the amenities of life make? Uh, does it make it easier for you to attract people to your community? Well, that, that's certainly part of it, but we, we do advertise. We, uh, we, we try to promote the community as much as possible. Like, we have events coming up tomorrow, for example. And uh, well, you've got you get we could talk about uh, the weekend coming up, but any special incentives that you do to attract businesses to uh, your community? Yes, we we have a tax incentive, which most communities do. But uh, we we think uh, our motto is uh, you know where lifestyle counts, and that that's what we try to promote. Now you've got uh, a busy weekend coming up. Give us some of the highlights of this weekend. Well, we have an under 10 regional. Uh, soccer tournament, which will bring in about 500 people, that's grandparents, aunts, uncles, you name it. And uh, also seating trends is on at Seeger Wheeler, which is uh, a National Historic Farm site uh, eight miles east of here. All right, so that's just a couple of the things that are going on. That's just this weekend, a busy summer planned here in Rosser. And just before we go, who's going to win the Stanley Cup? I like L.A. All right, they're, they're up one nothing. So we'll see if that works out for you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Okay, thank you. you and as the mayor was saying, Jeff, Rosser has a lot of things going for it and a lot to do, not the least of which is an award-winning CN station. That's right. It is a uh, renovated and completely put to uh, I can say renovated and uh, restored uh, CN station that is now known as the Station Arts Centre. Diana, how long has the Station Arts Centre been here? Well, the station building itself has been here since 1901. It's a CN train station. The Arts Centre, as the organization that it is right now, uh, has been here since 1990. Now, the part we're in is relatively new, though? Yes, the part we are standing in right now was a renovation that started in 2008 and was unveiled in 2009. Now, I know you've got, uh, first of all, you've got a gallery. You can see some of the artwork on the walls, quilts in this, in this particular situation. But you've got a gallery here as well as a tea room and, and goes along with the theatre. Yes, that's right. We uh, also have a bit of a gift shop that features pottery and jewellery and all sorts of things by local artists as well. And let's talk a little bit about uh, the, the commitment to the arts. It's not just the summer theatre. What else goes on here? We have a concert series that runs approximately September through April, depending on who we book and when they can come through. That's usually about nine shows, one offs per year. And we also have a coffee house series, which is new for up and coming musicians, and a number of other events that just come up as we add them. So we last week had the White Birch Ballet. This week we've got Elixir Quartet. It's an ensemble that will be coming and playing here. And uh, we, I, I did mention it, the uh, summer production, uh, professional production that's here every year at the Station Arts Centre. What's this year's show? This year we're very excited. We have W.O. Mitchell's Jake and the Kid. Uh, as you mentioned, we have a summer show every year. We do change that show every year. Um, this year, Jake and the Kid is starting, starring Andy Curtis from One Yellow Rabbit in Calgary. And our kid is Alex Batiki, a 14-year-old boy from St. Denis. While we were at the Station Arts Centre, we were treated to a performance by the Rostron Junior College Chorale. They are one of the four musical groups at RJC. Musical director Richard Jansen led the group in a couple of tunes for us. Rostron Junior College is a private Christian school with about 100 students, grades 10 to 12. And Derek Crozier is president of the local Lions Club. Derek, uh, thanks for being here tonight. Uh, right, thank you. This is a beautiful, beautiful park. Uh, for anybody who hasn't been to Centennial Park in Rosthern, there is so much going on. There's rides for the kids. There's a pool. And I understand a lot of what we're seeing here is the result of the hard work by the Lions Club. Yes, it is. Uh, the Lions have always had a lot of involvement in the park, as you can see with the amusement rides and things like that. But most recently here, within the last two years, we were able to upgrade the uh, playground structure. Mm -hmm. So uh, with the new playground structure and adding the outdoor fitness equipment uh, with help from uh, a grant from Affinity Credit Union, we're able to complete that in a, in a short time period. Uh, most recently, what we have coming in, we have two more new pieces of playground equipment coming in, uh, largely due to a part of a matching grant from the Community Initiatives Fund uh, for Rostern here. So we do have uh, an Apollo, I guess, a rotating climber coming in, which is an awesome piece for the kids, as well as uh, just a big saucer swing coming in. So really looking forward here at the end of June to getting that installed. Absolutely. I'm sure all the kids, big and little in the community, are looking forward to that. What does it take? I mean, that's a huge under 
undertaking and a, a local club I mean do you have enough members or is it just a lot of it's, hard work it's people? always always a struggle we do have a, a very good core group here so we have a good core group of about 20 members who are always you know have five have or are able to find time to come out uh, we are a 30 member club strong or yeah, I think come out right but anyway the uh, we're always looking for new members uh, due to the hard work of all our members we run a, a pass to dinner which is our, probably our largest fundraiser here in town as well as an Easter Bunny drive Christmas tree sales and just any little type of project that we can find to, to run here in the community of Roster and, and great support by the community absolutely a lot of hands go into it uh, you're a member of the local detachment here you've been here for a few years now uh, yes what do you like about Roster I love Roster uh, as being a very family-oriented community and uh, as a members we're encouraged to get involved with our communities and it's been great here. Rostern has been great for a young family. Absolutely. Well, thank you for your time and thanks for all your hard efforts. We might try the rides a little bit later if we can uh, beat the line up there. <laughs> Absolutely. Looking forward to that. All right. Thanks, Sarah. Okay. Thank you. We get to go on the rides? Well, I'm going to. I don't know about you, yeah. but I'm Ferris going to. Wheel. Hey, Kev is back with us today, and I know earlier today you had a chance to check out. I know you consider it to be one of the finest rec areas in the province. I think when you drive either to Prince Albert or down to Saskatoon, you always look about a kilometer north of Rostron. It's the, it's the big regional park. It's the Valley Regional Park, and they have 18 holes of golf. We didn't play today, but we talked to the pro, Ryan Abeg. Ryan, a fabulous golf course. It is well known when you drive by here, everyone kind of looks in and says, boy, that would be a nice course to play. So talk about your course. Yeah, it, it's an 18 hole golf course. Uh, we expanded from nine holes about eight years ago. Uh, the newer holes are really starting to mature. Uh, the course wintered well this year. We put through about 20,000 rounds of golf a year. So it's a little bit more resorty. We're busier in June, July, and August. Yeah. And uh, you know, we get lots of the family type campers, golfers, picnicking, so that's our clientele. Well, it is, and uh, like you said, it, you're very family oriented. Uh, it's an easy course, par 72. I say easy because <laughs> you said 6,700 uh, feet and all that, yeah. but I mean, or, or yards on that. So maybe just talk about the golf course on that. Uh, yeah, the golf course, it, it, it's a championship uh, length golf course, 6,700 yards, par 72 from the back tees. Uh, the fairways in general are wider, though. It's uh, very playable for, for the average golfer or, you know, very challenging as well for, for the seasoned professional, depending what tees you're mm -hmm. using. Uh, the greens are fairly large, I'd say average uh, size, uh, you know, compared to other courses around the province, and they're not too slopey, so it, it's a fun, uh, fun course to play with a wide variety of holes. Well, you know, those that have played with me know, Ryan, there's water here in the background, so I would lose everything I had in my bag. So <laughs> talk about your signature hole, and we'll wrap it up here. <laughs> yeah, the uh, hole number nine here is our signature hole. It's a par three, about uh, 150 to 160 yards, all over water, uh, large green, and, uh, you know, it always uh, is a good test uh, when you're finishing up the front nine. All right, before we go, we want to show you a quick stop we made along the way. Yeah, we popped into Osler for a coffee. Our bus driver, Dennis, did another fine job of getting us up Highway 11 to the Osler restaurant. Inside, we met with some of the guys on Coffee Row. One of whom claims Rob McDonald cheated him out of his fish dinner in Big River. Hmm, have to check on that one. <laughs> and we also had a chance to chat with Helen, who was waiting for her lunch to arrive. Okay, so in case you haven't been noticing in tonight's show, I've been saying Ross Thurn. And I've been saying Ross Thurn. Kev, what do you say? Rose Town? <laughs> no, Kev, wrong community. <laughs> All right. Ross Thurn. All right. Ross, Ross Thurn. Oh, okay. Well, of course, we can't agree on how to pronounce the name of this community, so we figured why not talk to the residents who actually live here. What's the name of this town? Ross Thurn. What do you say? Rostern, Saskatchewan. What's the name of this town? Rostern. What's the name of this town? Rostern. Rostern. <laughs> Rostern, Saskatchewan, and it's the proper way to pronounce it is with a soft th sound. Lou, what's the name of this town? <laughs> Rostern. Rostern. What's the name of this town? Rostern. What's the name of this town? Rostern, Saskatchewan. Yay. <laughs> what's the name of this town? Rostern. What's the secret to your fried chicken? Oh, that's the secret. <laughs> <laughs> it is Ross Turn. Not Ross Thurn, it's Ross Turn. <laughs> and cheer. All right, so obviously the debate continues. A lot of residents split. So we'll just leave it as a debate, and I guess however you say it, you
you say it, right? I guess so. I guess yeah. so. Pretty straightforward. It's been a jam-packed day here. We have so many people to thank. The great crowd that's uh, gathered behind us to come and hang out in Centennial Park with us. Also, we want to thank our tour guides. They've been absolutely fabulous mm -hmm. for us today. Dr. Don Grieve, who is a retired physician who has delivered 1,800 that's babies right. in this community. Mm -hmm. He's uh, shared his day with us. and.